Okay, so uh, we'll have time just to update your toolbox because there are several updates that we really need in order to uh, to run today's example uh, for regression. So you know you need to switch to the correct folder where your uh, old version of your toolbox was installed. And then uh, to run this, to unzip, download. As I said, the most important line of the code is just this one. Yeah. So yeah, if you know if you know what the code is doing, maybe you just copy this one. Yeah, it's fine. The rest of them just uh, the first time you probably need. Okay, uh, we will look at uh, regression problem, and uh, this is the outline of today's session. Uh, we will start to look at the regress function, built-in function in statistic toolbox in MATLAB. And then the regression learner, just like the classification learner, we used before. Uh, this is a user interface provided by the MATLAB environment to allow you to, uh, through the click, to uh, select different models of regression and see what we can do with this. Then we will uh, look at some real data set uh, to run regression. Okay, for that one, we need a X matrix and the Y response variable. Uh, then we will look at this highly variable gene expression analysis. If you are given a set of the cell, and how can you identify those highly variable genes as we described in the lecture? Those genes are important, right? Uh, at the end, <coughs> we will still have time to do the lasso. Lasso uh, <coughs> will have very similar function call structure as regress. But because it gave you the uh, regularization uh, panel, so you have the way to select the variables that you want to include in your final uh, model. So we will see how to run lasso, and uh, uh, probably we have some examples to use real data set to run lasso. Okay, any questions? Okay, if you just come in, came in, uh, you need to upgrade your toolbox to the latest version. Just make sure. Yeah, I just check, I just double check everything works fine. Okay. All right, so we will look at the function uh, regress. So if you see doc documentation regress. Uh, so let's see which regress. So this function is located in toolbox statistics. So this is a very basic function. If you do doc, you will see the documentation. See how are you going to use this function? We will uh, play with example uh, data set provided by this documentation. Okay, the syntax is easy. Uh, 
the problem is you want to estimate the beta. Beta is the parameters for each given, for each variables, um, in order to give different weight to explain why parameter. So your input is y, x, big X, and the B. So you want to build this linear regression model. So to have y B times x, okay. So this is a vector. So n by one. This will be vector p by one depends on whether you have this beta zero in there or it could be the p plus one times one okay and x is a matrix n by p If a p equals to one, you have a simple regression. Okay. If you have a mod more than one variable, so p greater than one, you have multiple regression. So in this example, we will use uh, two variables, x1, x2, to explain why the mileage per gallon. Okay, we copy this and put into here. Okay, so this is an example data set built in in the MATLAB provided for, for your convenience to uh, have some play, uh, data to play with. There are multiple uh, properties for 100 samples of car. So in this example, we want to use x1, x2, uh, two variables to explain the why, okay? Uh, if you have a data set like this, you uh, can start with a scatter plot, okay? You want to scatter x1 against y. So just look at the uh, figure to give some idea of whether there's relationship between one variable versus another. So in this plot, scatter plot, we have x axis is the weight of the, the car, and then you have y as uh, mpg. So it makes sense because the larger car will be more, uh, less efficient minor per gallon, so makes sense to us. Then you shut this down and you can plot two to mileage per gallon. Also, this negative correlation, you can see the trend. Uh, then come back to this documentation. The next, you want to. Uh, create a matrix, okay? Put x1, x2. Uh, yeah, in this case, we, we can ignore the interaction cur term, okay? So if you believe there nonlinear interaction between x1, x2, you can add this in. So this is just product of these two variables. As an independent variable, so you include three variables. One of them is composed variable by the product of x1, x1, 2. So this is a way to do this interaction term, but our example, we, we can just copy the uh, 
non-example uh, part. Okay, so it's easy to understand. So if you put that three uh, terms in, you create a matrix X. So this matrix contains one column with one. This is for the intercept at the end. And then you have a first variable, uh, the uh, weight, and then the power, the second. So you put this three columns in, the three columns and 100 uh, samples. So we are constructing this big X here, okay? Where's my pen? So now this big X contains 100, so N is 100, P is 2, okay? However, uh, this constructed contains 3, <coughs> it becomes 100 by 3 because this, uh, this 1 in there, okay? <coughs> okay. Any questions so far? Oh, the size, if you, uh, if you take this out, this will give you the dimensionality of size X. So this is 100 by one. So it's just tell you, yeah, how many column, how many rows you have, yeah. So if you gave this 100 and one to this function once, so if you do once, see, okay, uh, I want to three by one, it will give you at least of one by three, but if you give 100, it will give you a long vector. You don't have to type that, okay? So just create uh, a vector contains 100 ones, basically. So this this part. Okay, we have X here. Uh, of the C visor, they have a missing data. So here we have a missing data in our original problem. So this has to be removed. Yeah, so in this program here, uh, doesn't care uh, whether, so this function uh, supposed to be tolerable to missing data. If you don't, uh, if you didn't know they're missing data, uh, the function should take care of this, get rid of those internally by itself. But what we, I want to do is to remove this manually. So let's see. I gave to. So this is a row 77. So I will remove that. Instead of using 100 rows, I will use 99 rows as my input data. So anyone can tell me how to do this, how to remove this row 77 from X. So that's the way you can pick the row 77, okay? So, so if you do this, you will get this particular row here. Um, but if you set this into nothing, <coughs> then this, this row will be removed from the original X matrix. Now this X matrix right now is 100 by three. Uh, after you remove it, it will become 99 by 3, okay? Remember, we still have to remove the Y uh, as well, 77. Because right now, the paired variable Y 
will be 100 cars, but here you have 99, it's not matched. Uh, so we remove this particular el element in Y77 again. So now we can build our regression model using X to uh, predict the Y. So in that case, you can just copy this and that will give you the Y, the beta. I gave you three numbers. First is the the one associated with O ones. So this is intercept, and then you have two negative values to indicate the relative contribution for each of x one, x two to explain the uh, y variable. Is that clear? Okay. <coughs> yeah, we cannot copy this because we don't have uh, this interaction term, okay? If you want to copy, uh, you can uh, copy it to here, but uh, not the this part, okay? If you want to copy this, because we are using just two, two variables without the interaction term, because I, we didn't explain what the interaction term was, is. Um, okay, uh, so I will come back to this PowerPoint. So if you have um, <coughs> now, if you have x and why uh, you want to solve the problem by regression to predict the, the beta. So uh, as I said, the equation was like this. Then if you, uh, if you do linear algebra, B will be x transposed and times y. So we are going to try whether this will work for our example without even using the regression. Um, so what, what I will write will be uh, uh, inverse x times y. Uh, so that's not working. So I have to do the so-called pseudo inversion. Uh, it's not working. I will try our uh, normal, e normal equation. Yeah, so here, um, so on this slide, I have several examples. If you have x and y, you want to do the linear regression, uh, there, there's sh some kind of shortcut. And if you do this, it's supposed to work. I don't know why I gave you so many non-zeros. Okay, I, I believe in the data set we still have non-negative uh, values, uh, uh, not numbers. So I have to check. 
in here. In the Y, okay, yeah, so that's a problem. Uh, so in Y, uh, we still have some not numbers. We have to remove them in order to make all the algorithm working, okay? That's quite a lot, <laughs> yeah. So we have to remove this non, uh, not a number. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do, okay. So if I, uh, so I found all the not numbers uh, and then remove them with index from X. And then I remove uh, them from Y. So if you have a way to, uh, if you manage to copy these two lines of code, this will search, check whether Y has non, uh, not a number in there, missing data, and then removes from corresponding rows in the X. So in that way, uh, we really clean the data. Otherwise, I, I, the way I'm trying to do it, it is not working. Thank you for you got. Now the, the data is really clean now. It's only have a 93 cars. Okay. Anyone need more time to finish this step? So we still run this beta uh, regression and then you still get the similar results. Should be similar or should be the same as before, right? So uh, to use this to compute beta, so we can now, we can try use the inversion, uh, the pseudo inversion to do this, okay? The inversion, that function does not work for the non-squared uh, matrix. So we have to use P. Basically, we invert the matrix and multiply it by one. This, this produce the same answer with the regression. Is that okay? Yeah. So, uh, so this tells you the relative contribution of x1, x2, and their direction, whether increase or decrease y's value. You can also write in this way, okay? So this is uh, the normal equation. So the normal equation uh, writes like, invert, okay, invert, x transpose time x. I hope the this is correct because I'm not so sure whether the input should be variable by uh, sample or sample by variable, but this, sh this should work. Okay. So this solution is using uh, the normal equation to solve this linear regression problem. This operation is so common, so MATLAB actually defined a uh, operator, this x by slash y, and to give you directly the answer, because 
uh, engineering uses so many, so much, and uh, so you can have x backslash y to get the beta value. Okay, let's look at this regression linear. If you copy this uh, regression, okay. Okay, so this is interface. Let's start with a new session, and you want to have some variables, so they are either from the files or from a workspace. We have our x, y, so we just from workspace, we know what we are doing. Um, then here, you have to select the input, what's the data set, the data set. Hmm. So we use columns as variables. And from workspace, we have a Y as your. Then you don't need uh, the first column because the first column is all Ys. So, yeah, you should just set up your environment like this. You select your X, uh, use that as a input variable, and then use response variable use will be y, okay, S lower y. So in that way, you just tell the regression learner, okay, which variable you want to predict for, you, you build a model for, and then what's your input data is, the big X matrix is in there, okay. Yeah, you, you want to use everything in the X to predict Y. <coughs> now if you put into the single cell data analysis context, that will be X will be the whole expression matrix of many genes, and then you want to predict Y. Y could be uh, some features of the cell. Uh, yeah, you but you can still read the matrix file into memory. Into yeah, yeah. You can put it into it as X. I show you how you use examples. Uh, yeah, but that's the way you you pr you have other ways to pre prepare your data set. If you have a, a CVS files, Excel spreadsheet, you sh you should have a way you can uh, find a way to put that in. Now you should start the session. Uh, so there are all different kinds of uh, regression. Linear regression models. Select the simplest one and then see trim them all. <coughs> mm. 
Yeah, so this is a linear regression model. I don't know exactly um, the result table. <coughs> yeah, I'm not very familiar with this interface. I don't know exactly where the parameter they predict is located. Um, This plot shows the input data that's in blue dots and then predicted for each of the samples. Uh, Yeah, I, I'm not so sure how to use how to look at this, but that's uh, the interface they provide to to do this uh, regression uh, models. Maybe I should try. Oh, yes, I think I know because I was confused with why I didn't see the regression line. This is, this is not because we have x and two, x1 and x2. So uh, it's not a, a sing, simple uh, linear. Uh, y and y hat, yeah. This is a plot. This plot is a, yeah, it's not a linear. Mm -hmm. Not just one single line. Yeah. So this is just show you the difference between your predicted and the uh, observed. This one here? Yes. Yeah. I can cl click this? Oh yes, this is scatter plot of the predicted with a true. Yeah. Yeah, this can tell you uh, how far away your prediction uh, offsite from this expected. So if you have a perfect prediction, all the points should be on this perfect prediction line here. You're right. Okay, uh, any other questions? If you have a data you can organize in the way that you can put that in this, you probably can have a lot of different ways to click buttons to learn more about the different
more complex uh, models. Okay, should we move on to the next topic? Yeah, now we, we will use real data sets to make uh, X and Y for ourselves, see whether we can apply some of those techniques we just learn to do some real work. So I clean all the workspace. Mm. Okay, now I'm going to construct my own X and my own Y, okay? Because I just assume once I gave you X and Y, you know what to do next, all right? So we will use, uh, single cell data toolbox then um, maybe just example data Processed will be great, will be great. Um, so let's focus on one cell type here. Okay, which one we should focus on? Okay, I click this button to separate the cells into different groups. I separate them by cell type. I'm not going to manually order the names, but by uh, just by size. Yes. Okay, in this figure, I have uh, the most. Now here, I have the fibroblast. One thousand fibroblast. Yeah, I think I will just extract the fibroblast out from this data set, and we will work on this, okay? So what you can do is just click this, make a new SCE, uh, this fibroblast only. Okay, if you have a problem, let me know what we are doing. Just look at different cell type and I found fibroblasts have enough cells and it looks all right. I want to extract the fibroblast out. That's what I'm doing here. Uh, once you have this interface, you can shut down the rest, the old one, no, the old fibroblasts. So now we need to do the QC again, uh, to do the basic QC stringent. I have a, a cluster of cells. They belong to fibroblasts, but because away from the majority of the other fibroblasts, I will, I will delete them, remove them. Yeah, we can use stringent. Yeah, normally, stringent will be okay. 
So I want to remove those, those cells. It's, it's the most small cluster, so I can brush it. I say delete. Delete the selected. If you select unselected, you will delete all the other cells, but only keep those ones. You don't want to do that at this moment. You select, you delete the select cells. Okay, now uh, the cell looks as a group. Uh, give me a little bit more confidence. They are fibroblasts, okay? Uh, there are no outer layers, and I do this QC again. to remove 26 genes. Okay, now, I will save this as a temporary, temporary fibroblast cells. Okay. So this just in case I uh, something happened, the crash, the program. I still have the the data set I already processed to load it back. Now, now you can export. Uh, let's build. Let's let's do a. Uh, because we, are, we want to use the expression matrix. So it's very easy to export X matrix. So you, you can just select this and see, want to export X matrix. So this matrix will be out easily, but we don't have a Y uh, matrix vector. So this, is, this will give you the matrix uh, 9,324 by 1,299, uh, this X matrix. But we need a Y matrix. I want you to predict the uh, differentiation uh, cell potency, differentiation potency. So in order to compute that, you need to uh, do this cell score because that potency is assigned to every individual cells. So we need a vector of the variable will are the uh, cell wise, okay. So we need a value for y. So let's click this this button here, and then you want to compute a particular score. And this score, uh, you are not go going to compare between samples. We just compute the score for each cell. So in this here, you see like differentiation potency, okay. So this. Potency tells you whether this cell state is more close to the stem cell, stem cells or not. Stem cell will have a really high value for this. Highly differentiated cell will be have a very low uh, differentiated potency. Okay. If you want to know more about this computation or what algorithm behind this, there are uh, PubMed paper describe this algorithm. But we just compute these values for every individual cells. Okay. So now we just click this. This is the introduction of the method. Our data is mouse data, so. Yeah. So this plot to show you uh, the values of each cell, their differentiation differentia uh, potency. Some cell in this corner have a really high value and uh, the color is more yellow. While the other place, the cell have a lower values. Okay, this is create a, a gradient then as a Y variable, we want to use X all the gene expression to predict Y, see so which gene uh, can be used as the most contributing variables to explain the variability of Y, uh, which is differentiation potency value across cells, right? Yep. So we need to uh,
you can export that export these values into workspace. This will give you a, a table, okay? This table contains 1,299 rows. This number is not random, is it? Because you have 1,299 1, cells. So each cell has a value here. So after you finish the computation of the potency value, you can close this. And now we can uh, export the X matrix. Now you select X. You can and you can ch still keep this checked. So once you save this, you will have X matrix. You will have your differentiation values. Okay, that's all we need. So I shut this down. Anyone has any questions what, what we are doing here? We try to build big X matrix. I want to have a Y matrix. Okay. So the Y matrix is inside this table. Okay. So this table is called a D I F F. Uh, policy, this table. Um, so I want to use, export this value to, you put a dot here, and then you have a CS, this is called sales score, okay? So this lines of code is just, have that table and give me the the column called CS. The value will be out as an information of the numbers. Okay? Yeah, this is what I, I just copied basically this line and make, make this Y variable. Now we have X and Y. Um, we need to transpose X because right now the X is by variable, uh, feature variable by sample. We need a sample by feature variable, okay? But before that, I would like to do a transformation. So I will do a CS transformation. Okay, this is a work, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so there's a, there's extra steps, okay. To transpose, the, the, the transform the values, okay. To make this more suitable for linear regression. Otherwise you have all zero ones. Uh, but yeah, for the details of the transformation, you have to look at the function. That will be another long story. It's called the Pierman residual transformation, but here we just put it in this way, okay? And then you need to transpose your matrix. Remember to put this semicolon at the end, otherwise it will, pr it will print out a lot of this uh, raw data on the screen. So at this moment, uh, we are prepared our regression model, uh, input and output. <coughs> so just, just iterate this, what the, the problem is, what we, our problem was, is. So we have this 1,299 cells expression profile regarding to 9,342 genes. 
or I, we really have to have a gene name. Okay. Unfortunately. Oh, the gene name is still in here, okay. So we need a G. We need a gene name, S-C-E. So, so at the end, we will see, okay, which gene actually contribute most to this potency difference across the cells, yeah. I recognize variable, oh, uh, there's no, uh, let's transform, transform, not a transformation, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, I will save this workspace for now. Uh, save. Uh, space. Uh, regressions. For regress. This is just for safety. I just save all the variables here uh, in a file uh, here. So if I somehow later I get this computer crash, I can re-log in, come back, and load this workspace off back. Okay. Yeah, I think. We should take a five minute break and in the middle of the break, you may want to think about once we have this, what to do, okay? Yeah, you have a, we are ready to do the regression. Yeah. But I haven't ever tried this. I don't know <laughs> what will happen. I don't know so many variables, well, whether this, this, this B will safe to do this. I'm not so sure.
Yeah, so I, I tried this during the break. It, it does work, and uh, you see uh, it try to do this fitting and try to estimate beta values. And you do, indeed, you get the beta values. And a lot of zeros, OK? But in the middle, there are some precision uh, problems. Um, because the model try to fit every single variables, whether, whether they are potentially will be major contributor or not, it will treat all the genes equally. At the end, it gave some values. But I said, uh, it works fine, but uh, uh, numerically, it's a little bit unstable. So we probably should replace this as a lasso. Uh, lasso should have a very similar uh, AXSO. Should have a similar structure. I, I didn't read the documentation, but uh, let's see. If you replace regression with lasso, uh, yeah, oh, lasso use x, y instead of y, x. So we need to replace. So instead of doing regression, you can do lasso uh, and put x in front, y. So let's see, uh, give this. Uh, Beta x, okay. <clears throat> oh, the, this will be uh, the solution of the. <clears throat> so Lasso gave you a solution for the beta, but it's not uh, just one solution. It gave you. Uh, different levels of the selection. So, so if you look at the BX, the output from Lasso, uh, it's also uh, for each column is a beta value for the regression. Uh, but when you move to the right end, you will see more zero and more zeros. Okay. At the very end, majority of this selected variable will be zero. Only the most important ones will be left with non-zero values. So, and also the last one didn't give you the error report of this precision problem. So in our large regression uh, model, we, with many, many variables like this, you have 9,000 genes you probably want to use lasso to regularize how many returned beta you want to include in the model. So if you decide to use the most stringent cutoff and the column 64, uh, BX 64 greater than zero, uh, Oh, no gene has been found. So let's try 63. No. 60. So when you select at this end, this level cut off, there are four genes have been selected with non-zero uh, beta values. We can check. Uh, what they are. So if you do a gene, so those are the four genes have been selected by Lasso that has been, can be used to explain the, uh, the Y, which is the differential in uh, potency. For the linear regression, I don't know how many beta is greater than zero. So linear regression, select 300, 
633 and uh, with non-zero variable uh, values. Uh, Lasso can give you a different solution. So if I do this, yeah, so you can decide how many genes you want to include in your model. Yeah, this is probably a little bit too much. But I just show you again, so how I get a B. So this is a regular regression, okay? Who has any problem? Question, question in the middle? Questions in the middle? No? Yeah, all right. Just want to know this. Yeah. B -S. Uh, so yeah, let's see, uh, i just do that again. So Bx will not return just one single column of B, but uh, many columns. And it's ranked by, from left to right, how many non-zeros will be included there. Y must be a real value. Yes, let's see. Yeah, you, your X hasn't been transposed. Your X should be, yeah, you, uh, your X has to be uh, sale by gene. Yeah, you just transpose. Yeah, then run that again, yeah. Yeah, because you mess up with the genes and the cells. Okay. Yeah, you have to be very clear uh, what you want to predict for. This is cell-wise, but they use genes to predict cell rather than the opposite. Okay. Yeah, good, good, good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I believe your X didn't transpose correctly. Yeah. Yeah, it should be cell by gene. Yeah. So, so my question is, can you use the regression method with the length to? Yeah, pr yeah, probably you can. Yes. Well, things are the same thing, right? Uh huh. You should. In, in theory, in theory. So for to deal with this large kind of regression problem, you want well, you want to use lasso instead of original because this not give you the flexibility. This returns. Uh, the lasso gave you the selection of different levels of the feature variables you want to include, how many you can decide, which columns you want to use, and numerically most stable. Uh, yeah. For small problems, just like the car, engine size, the price, the linear regression should be okay if you have dealing with this several hundred of variables is still okay.
Yeah, so follow our schedule, I jumped from the regression to lasso because the structure of the coding is so similar, right? It just, once you establish the, the matrix X and Y response variables, then you can select uh, lasso to, to do that. Uh, maybe just spend a couple minutes to look at lasso uh, inside and see whether we, I remember there's some kind of a tree structure, the, the plot, we can look at the number set a cutoff. <coughs> so this one, uh, it's written a big B variable name, so we call it BX, but it's the same. So this is a 25 column, and you see how many uh, non-zeros, okay? So this small example is only have five different variables and the lasso select the two of them at this column, 25 column level. There are procedures to let you know uh, where, where the cutoff you should set. In our examples, we have from one to column 60, 64, and you don't know where you should stop, where you, which cutoff you, you should use. Uh, there's some of this diagnostic plot to show you, okay, you should stop using that cutoff to give you the balanced number of the variables and also, okay, and also the percentage of explanation of the variability in Y. Okay, I think that's what I want to get is this so-called lasso plot. Um, so lasso plot will take the output, the beta variable, uh, beta value matrix. So you know you can pull out, you have your BX is your output. Then if you use lasso, uh, plot, give bx here, um, let's do a new fi figure. So that's your, uh, so plot. Yeah, I believe those are the individual uh, genes beta value change across uh, Cross diffed lambda, which is a uh, yeah, how to, how to describe this? Uh, let's see. So they create a trace plot for the beta value against L one norm of beta vector.
Um, so this is just one type of this lasso plot in order to let you know uh, during the process of in including variable or not uh, to give you the change of those uh, those penalty L1 norm penalty for those sum of those beta ab absolute values. Uh, yeah, I, I got confused exactly what those lines are. <laughs> okay, so this is one of these. Uh, and uh, I believe this function also allow you to do different types of the uh, lasso plot. Yeah, so what, what's this? The, uh, Think about this. I need to go back and look at what's in the y uh, axis. It's not very clear to me right now. Okay, but the, those purpose of those is, is let you know um, through this fitting procedure what's this beta value change as a uh, penalty term. And also there's some other, like the lambda plot, uh, the type will allow you to uh, select where the, the cutoff should be, uh, something like that. Uh, in the toolbox, I use lasso uh, to search for marker genes. So I, I put a particular group of this, the one cluster of cells labeled as one, and the rest of them cell, the rest labeled as zero. So I want to see, okay, which gene will give you this zero one prediction the best, and how many you want to use to explain this difference between zero one. So. I, in that case, I did a regression, but it's only zero one regression. Okay, use the lasso to find those marker genes, and I can specify how many marker genes I want to uh, extract from the matrix. Uh, here we predict the potency, which is continuous variable, so different from a what I just de described as a zero one uh, to find the marker genes for, for the certain class of cells. But the same structure here. Uh, I think I want to look at whether there are some meaning of those genes. Do you think those genes are meaningful in our fibroblast samples? I only see housekeeping genes. Yeah, so we select the fibroblast and uh, estimate their differentiation potency, and then we use lasso to find those genes. 
But to me, those genes are all housekeeping genes, so it doesn't make any sense. So for this, it could only because they are highly expressed, so they have a lot of non-zeros in there, so they tend to be included in the variable uh, model, in the regression model. I don't know. Yeah. The fibroblast as a whole, yes, we we include have a one thousand twenty. We have one thousand two hundred ninety nine fibroblasts. Out of the whole sample, including other cell types. Yeah, so that's what we are doing. We our input is X contains all the fibroblasts all the genes. Yeah, so that's the property that's what I want to do. I, I will remove those housekeeping genes because they tend to be included in the yeah. regression model because they have n no. values, not, not so many zeros. So that's why maybe the highly variable genes will be very useful. We say like those genes have more variability in there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at the end, it's like a 0 0.16. So it's like a. You, you mean each line is one gene? It's not. It's, it's, a it's, it's like a coefficient change in the cell. Like oh. So at, at the end, altogether, it's a stable thing that spreads to 2 persons, 16 persons, I guess. 16. Like uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not so sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I include emojis. Yeah, I start to see NF, Kappa B, the tubulin, uh, heat shock protein. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, it looks like this. This analysis doesn't make any sense because they all housekeeping genes. Uh, maybe that's true because there's no differenti differentiation potency uh, among fibroblasts. They all similar level. It's not a trajectory of development or differentiation from stem cell to there. But if we change it to another system, probably this will work. But now so far it's just random genes. Uh, what I can see, nothing related to the differentiation or uh, uh, other. Expression level uh, for particular gene, which yeah. gene? Potency. Yeah. Is it expressed high or what, what, what? No, it's not expressed high. It's the, the state of the cell is more similar to stem cell.
non-differentiated. Mm -hmm. Is a high potency is a high, oh, potency. yeah. If it's more similar to the dominant, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, the, the you mean the the potency value itself? This should be positive all the time. All positive numbers, yeah. but when I when I do a transform and then this is kind of weird to me. Uh, you don't have to transform. I don't have to transform. No, 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 not transform the potency value. I just transform the x. Yeah, just transform okay. the x. Thank yeah. You. Okay, in the last 30 minutes, we will uh, use uh, highly variable gene analysis. Okay. So for, th for this particular example, we didn't find any meaningful genes. I believe it's because the cells, there's no differentiation variability among them. It's just a group of cells that have been fully di di developed, differentiated. They all fibroblast. So, but we use algorithm to force them to give a value to make a gradient, but they're, they're not really different. So that's why uh, most of genes come out just based on how much information in that gene is given to us. But if we replace this to a better system with uh, uh, cells from a different time points of the differentiation, we probably can build this better values and use better systems to study this. Um, this still be a feasible option if you decide to do that. It sh should, should work some, sometimes, okay? But it depends on your why, what you want to predict for, okay? So now we can clean this. Uh, I'll come back to our toolbox. I want to use example to show the highly variable gene analysis. So for this uh, study, we need to have a homogeneous population of cells. If you have cells from a different cell type, different states, and they all something like this, uh, it doesn't make, make sense to predict this highly variable genes because that variability uh, could be from the, because of different cell type have a different uh, marker genes and the, the marker genes will only express in 30% of the fibroblast and not in other cells. So they created some sub uh, artifacts because uh, the cell type difference, heterogeneity. We are not talking about the heterogeneity of the cell types. But we are focusing on one cell type, all the cells in the same states. So I will focus on, let's see what cell type these are. One cell type. Yeah, so, so this, this green, uh, this light blue cluster is alpha cell. And alpha cell has two subclusters here, and we just select one of them and then to run highly variable gene detection, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to first rotate, so allow, I have a good angle to select those group of cells. And then I will extract them out. So I brush the cells and make sure they're all same cell type. And then 
click this delete cell, I will delete unselected cell. Okay, you don't want to expand to cell group, otherwise another subset of the upper cell will be selected. So you only select those brushed cells, but then delete unselected cells. If you click the wrong button, you have to restart this example. So now all the cells I, uh, I get is from the alpha cells, that homogeneous population of the group. And after this selection, I need to remove some genes. Expression level too low. I use a stringent cutoff to do the QC. Okay, 154 genes removed. Uh, your selection, uh, your brush may select a slightly different numbers of cells. So you may don't have the same numbers of the gene removed as I did. But that's the Um, now we can uh, do a embedding, for example, I will try to do all of this embedding again and see which, whether they are a really homogeneous population. You don't want to see like this too because this will take longer than the others. I just re-embedding the cells I selected to see whether there's internal structure if I do this independent embedding. Just make sure they are homogeneous population. <coughs> there's no cell type of problem, they all alpha cells, so we're okay. So after embedding, you can sh you can view uh, all the possible embeddings you have already. Yeah. Yeah. So you got lost by a select subgroup. Yeah. So you you brush. Yeah. You brush. You found a group of cells, yeah, whatever. Good. And then you see uh, delete, yeah, delete unselected. Then you, you have that, this homogeneous. Then you want to do a QC. The QC again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Basically, you have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are ready to do. Yeah, if you don't want to do re-embedding, it's fine. So this is uh, the re-embedded. You see, uh, Tisney and UMAP all gave me just one uh, cluster of cells looks pretty homogeneous. And the fate gave me some of the structure. If you decide to go further, see I can only extract cells from this region, that's okay. But, but so far, based on the UMAP and TISNI, we are okay. So this uh, population, uh, emphasize this like very very homogeneous okay once you have this you are ready to do the highly variable gene analysis uh, you need to click this button okay so this analysis will work on this homogeneous population and then extract those highly variable gene out of it 
And then we will have a list of genes and send it to the enricher analysis to see whether what the function of those genes are. So you click this and after uh, the, the reading of this, we, all the cells will be included. That's right, because we know they are homogeneous. And then you use spleen feet. There's some problem with this. Okay, in this figure, uh, on your left is this 3D plot. Each point is uh, a gene, okay? You can, I can highlight those genes. So the, the genes jump away out of this regression curve the, in the orange. Those are the highly variable genes. So we can, uh, for example, highlight this gene, the DAPL1, and its expression profile across the cells will be uh, shown here, and you can know why it's highly variable. So PPT is here, PYY is here, and if you select the gene with, within this curve, you see very different patterns here, okay? So the genes on this curve are the non-highly variable genes where genes jump out from here as the highly variable genes. And then next depends on, uh, you can select to just highlight those highly variable genes. Uh, as you will see, 150 of them, 150, okay? So those genes were selected based on the distance. This gene was not selected because their expression level is just too high and I intentionally uh, ignored some of those highly, highly expressed genes. Okay, now uh, once you select these 120, 50 genes or less or more, you can start to send uh, yeah, you can save their names uh, you can click this button and to, to do an enricher analysis so this button will send those gene names oh, something wrong with this Uh, yeah, so there, I have to fix that bug. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Oh, you didn't delete them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you use an old version of this program. Yeah, let me try. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you use an older version of this. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Yeah, this is very old. So y you want to new use a new version uh, by reinstall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I have a, a problem here and I cannot do uh, enricher directly, but it, it, I will fix that problem uh, later. But uh, once you have those gene name, you can export those names uh, save these names uh, using one of the button here. Uh, and then you collect those gene names and put in the enricher or other enrichment analysis to see whether they have a function uh, enriched. Yeah. 
yeah, for some reason I have this error. Yeah, so I have a problem to export uh, the name of these genes. Uh, yeah, this is a, a, a bug that should be fixed, but for now you just, you can only have some idea what those genes are. You can say through the workspace. Uh, can you? Okay, that's good. No, I tried. I have a problem. Are they? Uh, okay, yeah. So this was a. Oh, that's good. So at least you have some gene name to play with. So those genes has been this table has been uh, sorted by uh, whether they are highly variable gene or not. The top ones are the most highly variable gene we believe based on analysis. So you can. Uh, select those and you can select those genes to do the enricher analysis if you decide to do it. Okay, you can copy the name of those genes. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Victoria, and uh, that's that's helped. But uh, I I need to fix that bug, so you need you can just click and to to run. Okay, to do this, I have to replace my. Uh, Get rid of those. Quotations. And copy this. And go to enricher. Uh, enrich R. So this is a program. You can paste your gene. You put the gene names in there. Yeah, so I don't know whether there's uh, serum type endopeptide is activity related to the alpha cell function. I, I'm not so sure, but this just gave you a suggestion that those genes, for example, the highlighted in the, in the pop-up, this bar, the names, those genes um, as a group, they are highly variable expressed in alpha cell in that particular cell cluster. Yeah, I can Google this again, uh, alpha cells.
uh, try to to learn some biology out of this, see whether there some relationship with uh, uh, alpha cells. So far, I didn't see the too much the difference to the bacterium. I don't know. Uh, so. Yes, a lot of immune-related genes have been selected for. OK, uh, well that's the way uh, you can try to apply to different cell type. Uh, remember, it has to be homogeneous population of cells in order to do this. Uh, see whether those active genes you found make sense to explain the function or potential function of the cells under the study. Um, what I can see is that a lot of cells, they are alpha cells, but they start to show some immunity-related properties, like defense response. OK. This could be true, could be the false positive results. But you have to read the literature, see where those alpha cells were collected from, what type of mice. If you re read those studies, probably it's not to make sense. I don't know yet. Okay, so those studies from uh, this gene set, uh, this data set. This is a study of. Uh, Yeah, I don't know what kind of treatment whether they have already. Uh, yeah, so there are, there are some of these procedures probably triggered some of those response. I don't know, but that's hypothesis. Okay. All right, I think that's all the uh, items that we finish them all and uh, let me know if you have any questions before we leave. Yeah, you can export the Excels. I'll show you. If you want the whole table. Yeah, the whole table with the genes. Can you get that? With the genes, like yes. Suppose if you're hovering on this pathway. Yeah. Uh, you uh, yeah, that will be your like Yeah, the table. table. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so we're getting all the genes which are up or down like this. Yes. Yeah, so I think it's right, right here. If we export, can you work? <laughs> oh, sorry. This should be all there. So the first row, and you should have that genes. Okay, okay. Yeah, so it's an exported table in the soil. Oh, okay. That's true. Right. Yeah. Uh, can you also see in the uh, uh, Metascape? Metascape? Yeah, Metascape. Yeah, Metascape is the same. It, you can also post it there, see which. Yeah, yeah. Metascape also very comprehensive. Yes. So you can also, also see the gene name. Yeah, similar. you should, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But both will be similar, right? We located the same number of genes. Mm -hmm. You should. Both yeah. Okay. That's yeah. 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 Yeah.
That's his email. You just take a picture. Oh, the top one? Yeah, the top one. Did you say I should email someone about the actual MATLAB part not working, or that would probably be it? I will fix that That's very soon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. That's pretty Thank easy. You. Yeah. Thank you. Reinstalled it, and it still did the same thing, and then the computer shut down. So I yeah. just so yeah. I just left the computer as is. Mm -hmm. um, it, but you have a Windows machine, right? That's mm -hmm. Windows. You shouldn't. You you can just reinstall that package. Yeah, it should work. Not like your responsibility, but like 